Good morning, APUSH. Today we are going to be doing a deep dive into probably the most infamous political scandal in American history, Watergate. So before we get started, make sure that you have in front of you some paper to take notes as usual, a writing utensil, and any other resources they think might be helpful while we take notes. Also make sure you have a tab open either on your Chromebook or on your phone that has today's lesson and classwork available so you can follow along. As a reminder, what we launched this week is um, a Google Form quiz that you will be doing at the end of every video. This is what is counting as your participation. So be sure you submit the Google Form every single day answering those key academic terms as we start a, our review and prep for the AP exam. While you, uh, so make sure you have all those resources, resources in front of you. I will give you a few seconds to do that while I switch to share my screen. Great, we will go ahead and get started. And today we are specifically going to be doing a deep dive on the Watergate scandal, which I'm sure you guys have heard reference to, but today we're going to go into uh, greater detail about what exactly happened with Watergate. So first we need to understand what the Watergate scandal even is. In June of 1972, this is probably the most infamous political scandal to ever capture Americans' attention, even potentially more than what happened with the Trump administration this year. Again, June of 1972, a group of men working for Richard Nixon broke in to the Democratic headquarters known as the Watergate Complex. And this was just one in a list of illegal activities conducted by the Nixon administration and the Committee to Re-Elect the President, also known as CREEP, ironically. What's, so what is super important about this is that this is kind of like the straw that broke the camel's back. They are exhausted, they are over him, and this is just another political scandal that Nixon is now involved in. Earlier in his um, presidential career, Nixon created a group called the Plumbers, the Plumbers, who were in charge of stopping leaks from his administration. So this group used wiretaps on government employees and reporters to make sure that they did not ca uh, catch wind of the illegal activities that the Nixon administration was a part of. The White House also created an enemy, enemy list of Americans who opposed Nixon, the Vietnam War, or both. So this could range from politicians, journalists, basically any American of noteworthy stature that could bring down his popularity in regards to his administration or Vietnam. And, the, and even more importantly, the plumbers, again that group, used government agencies like the IRS to investigate these American citizens who opposed Nixon. So this is a misuse of government resources to specifically target enemies of the current president. And although there is no solid proof demonstrated that President Nixon ordered these activities, over months of investigation, it became clear that he was at least engaged in the cover-up. So even if it wasn't him explicitly who ordered all of these wiretapping, he at least involved himself in covering up that this illegal activity took place. A Senate investigation with televised hearings made this a talking point in American homes. So this wasn't just this big political thing going on in DC because Americans could watch these hearings from the comfort of their own homes. It became something that people would talk about anywhere and everywhere and everyone established an opinion on it. And during this, it was also revealed that Nixon had been secretly taping all Oval Office conversations. And this, in regards to the picture on this slide, led to a legal, ballady, legal battle over the release of these tapes. So um, Americans demanded that the, he release the tapes of these recorded White House conversations. So as all of this information is coming to light, pressure increased um, even more when Nixon fired the special prosecutor who was investigating his case in 1973. So it just looked really bad. And in protest, his attorney general resigned and the House of Representatives began impeachment hearings. 
the Supreme Court also later ordered that the White House had to turn over those Nixon tapes. And it was revealed that portions of those tapes had been erased. And when Nixon was faced with pretty much guaranteed impeachment, it was not, it was very, very clear that he was involved and he was involved and he involved himself in illegal activities. Um, it was not, not subtle at all. Nixon decided to resign and he resigned on August 9th, 1974. Vice President Gerald Ford took the oath of office and he becomes the president of the United States. So again, in August of 1974, over, um, over the television, Nixon announces his resignation of the presidency. And we are going to switch. This is a very um, detailed but like quick overview about exactly what the Watergate scandal is. And now we are going to look at quickly at these long-term consequences. So if you look at this graph, you can see um, the percent of people who trust Washington so, and by Washington, that means the government, always or most of the time. So you can see, especially between Eisenhower and Johnson, it doesn't really go below 70%. People are pretty trusting of the government at this time. However, during the Nixon administration, 1970 to 1973, uh, so this is right at the beginning, 1970 is like during his time in Vietnam, it drops to almost 50. And then with Watergate, it drops below 40. This continues with uh, President Ford, who takes over, and it uh, again continues with President Carter. It resurges a little bit in rate with Reagan, a little bit with George W. Bush. You'll notice that this is 9/11. This is um, so. This is a uh, this little peak here uh, with George W. Bush is uh, partially res uh, a result of what happened with 9/11. And then you can see during Obama's presidency, especially with and then leading into Trump, it is at an all-time low of about 20 percent. So in just about 60 years, the general public has gone from 70 percent trusting the government to about 20. That is an insane drop about in terms of those who um, who trust the government. So I'm going to have you guys take, I'm going to give you guys uh, a second to pause this video and ask yourself these questions. Why do you think American trust in the government is so low today, especially considering uh, the Trump presidency? And then does it matter? Does it matter that Watergate has this, um, has this effect on the American public's trust in the government? Because we can clearly see that Watergate is where it starts and it almost never fully recovers except for little short bursts. So that is a consequence of Watergate is Americans stop trusting the government. Doesn't matter that we don't trust the government anymore. So take, uh, pause this video, take two minutes just to uh, silently consider these questions and it's going to be very helpful um, coming to the exit ticket in today's classwork. Give you guys two minutes. Great, you should have paused the video and answered those two questions. We are now going to transition very quickly into um, a quick short answer practice. Short answer questions are insanely important and it is a skill that I've noticed that we've been, um, we've been losing some of the diligence with our short answer questions between the exam um, that we took before we went on um, COVID break and um, also in some of our exit tickets. So we are going to go over this skill very quickly. Let me make sure I have this as big as possible so that way you guys can. Oops, I don't know where I need it. Okay, so I have this as an example. Um, so first, just a reminder that when you are answering a shorter, short answer question, you should be naming key evidence either in a key term or a very, or a very specific fact. And um, you have to explain, you can't just say this re relates to this, you need to explicitly explain why you chose that piece of evidence to answer your question. So today I have a sample one. This is going to be somewhat related to your exit tickets. So if you're watching this video and you're paying attention, this is helping you take care of your exit ticket. Good on you for that. And the question is, briefly explain one long-term consequence of the Nixon administration. Going back to our slide earlier, 
I think it's pretty clear that there is a lack of trust in the government, but I can't just say, I'm going to start it there. So, and note that lack of trust in the government is a very specific piece of evidence. It's not just people stopped trusting or um, the government doesn't look as good. I'm being very specific in my terminology. So I can say a long term consequence is America is Americans continuous distrust of the American government. That's right. But do I actually connect or explain my answer? Not really. So briefly explain one long term. Um, so I'm going to push it. Because of the Watergate scandal and other administrative uh, American, so I mentioned Watergate. So there's another key term where I'm really pushing that idea of distrust. So I'm saying because of the Watergate scandal and other administration issues, Americans began to see the federal government as corrupt. Make sure I have my spelling correct and I'm going to blow this back up so that way we can see it. Okay, so that is how I answered it. So name key evidence and explanation for why that evidence answers the question. Our question is briefly explain one long-term consequence of the Nixon administration. I in theory, I could have stopped at a long-term consequence is America's dis uh, continuous distrust of the American government, but that doesn't really, it's a reason, but it doesn't really answer the question. So by adding simply because of the Watergate scandal, one, that shows I have a clear historical knowledge of the topic and other administration issues, it shows that I'm looking at this as an administrative issue, not just one moment in the administration. Americans begin to see the federal government as corrupt. So now that we've done that, I want you to take one minute to silently reflect on the way that you have been answering your short answer questions and what the gap is. Today's exit ticket is a short answer question and I hope to see um, a greater depth of detail and explanation in our answers today. So be sure to reflect on your action step for today's exit ticket and we are going to go ahead and transition. These are the five terms that you will see in your Google Form quiz. Again, this is going to be counting towards your um, attendance today, so be sure to complete it. It's really important that we practice these terms. Uh, so the election of 1972, new federalism, southern strategy, Vietnamization, and SALT, these have come out of the last two lectures on Nixon. I look forward to seeing your guys' response. As always, I will be in Zoom from, um, let's stop sharing. I will be on Zoom from 11.15 to noon. Make sure that you watch this video and complete the oral drill, oral drill quiz before you join me. I am happily available to answer any questions that you guys might have. Look forward to seeing you guys there. I also have office hours from 2.34. Come join those too. I will talk to you guys later.